Hello and welcome to the Horoscope Vault. This is a podcast that explores the week ahead and the wildness of the world through the lens of astrology. This show is for you if you are tired of feeling blindsided by things, like just as you get a hold of life and all its challenges, something else comes along to stir the pot or throw you off balance. So here we explore the energy of the unseen and this show just aims to support you with making your most confident decisions through life's chapters. I'm Charlie, an associate member of the American Federation of Astrologers and astrology reader for Radio is the Bob and Sherry show. This episode is the weekly horoscope forecast for the week beginning June 17th, where a full moon in Capricorn is the first of two in that sign, suggesting that there is this long drawn out ending pending for everyone. So discover what that is in the depths of this episode. I'll forecast using the sun in your sign as the first house point of the chart, which is called the solar charting method. It takes the sun in your sign as the first house point, but you can get a little bit more personalized, a bit more of an in-depth forecast. A full natal chart analysis is really what gets to the nitty gritty of dates and challenges for you to expect personally. And that's because a natal chart is very specific info. It takes in your time and location of birth as well as the date and the predictions get freakishly scarily on point and if you want to discuss the option of a reading my books will be reopening at the end of this week once i've completed the last few of the current bookings so email me at the horoscope vault at gmail.com to ask any questions about getting your reading soon so this week is a season change we are coming up to halfway through the year and just over halfway through the zodiac wheel as we move into the seventh sign season of 2024. Because the year starts out in Capricorn and now we're going into Cancer. So that's seven signs later. But out of the gate this week, the theme opening these next seven days is a pesky square, which we had a lot of last week. There was a ton of Gemini square energy last week, which was very decision making. It was very moments of mental choices where, you know, thinking could shift at the click of fingers. And really, it was a confusing battle within the realms of your own mind to make sure you didn't succumb to the fear of missing out, potentially overwhelming your feelings and therefore influencing your actions. So another square on Monday, the 17th of June, is this tension between Mercury in Gemini, square Neptune in Pisces. So Mercury is at 29 degrees of Gemini. It's about honoring your extremes. It's also about going through unforeseen extremes. In the recent birthday episode for June 9th to June 15th, which is for um, exclusive subscribers, I discussed how March 20th of next year, 2025, could see, and I think I worded it as not pandemic 2.0 necessarily, but another worldwide sweeping illness sickness problem. So that episode was released last week. And then I noticed that this week, there's a lot of news about bird flu on the rise and something in today's news saying that it could be the next pandemic. And that's really because all of these squares to Neptune seem to be ramping up towards Neptune's shift into Aries next year, which I know is going to come with a worldwide sickness event. It's just what kind of event that is. It might be quite a few. One episode I released last year spoke about Neptune moving into Aries, indicating infected meat. And I noticed that bird flu is starting to, I think it said infiltrate chicken and cows. And I'm going to try and go through and find that specific old episode. So bear with me because I'm loaded up with readings too. And that's over 200 episodes for me to go through, but I will find it. And I will replay it here on the show so that you can see how over a year ago, the prediction of infected meat was made here on the horoscope vault. And the way this prediction was made is because Neptune in its lower vibe is about sickness and toxicity. And it's moving into the sign of Aries. Aries pertains to meat. So I just married those two things together. There is the potential of toxic meat or sickness through meat. And Neptune hasn't been in Aries since the last civil war in the 1860s. And most astrologers are focused on the war aspect of this ingress. But I'm looking a bit deeper. And yeah, so last year I released an episode 
that touched on one of my predictions for Neptune in Aries. It discussed poisoned or infected meat causing a huge outbreak. And just to add this to the stream of consciousness sharing, Neptune in Aries is also potentially going to come up with things like mass Lyme disease. Yes, there's going to be the civil war potential as well. That's one that's already being spoken about in the astrology community. I mentioned about the problems with food additives. Neptune into Aries is also going to come up with more problems to do with alcohol consumption and the consequences of alcohol consumption. So hydrocephalus, water in the head, in the brain cavities, extreme sodium deficiency due to electrolyte imbalance. Neptune in Aries is going to come with people abusing pre-workout drinks, people getting deep into psychedelics. There's always a drug theme when it comes to Neptune's shift. So Neptune in Pisces really was to do with the opioid epidemic in the 1990s and kind of to do with cocaine in the 80s and the 90s too. But the biggest thing that I've held on to because I just see it happening so strong is the Neptune into Aries poisoned meat evolution. I've got a whole bunch of notes written out to do a Neptune in Aries episode, which I don't know why I've been putting off. I've been prioritizing all these current episodes, but maybe I'll get that one out soon because it's already being felt now. But when I find that previous episode, I will put the clip here on the show so you can see that the prediction was made. And actually, if you are a regular listener of the show, and you kind of briefly recall that episode yourself, if you know what episode it was, and you can message me to let me know the episode name, then there is a free astrology reading in it for you. If you can tell me which episode it was that I mentioned, Neptune in Aries and infected meat. But back to how this week's Neptune square shows up on a personal level. Mercury square Neptune is not about pretending to be something you're not anymore. It's about honoring how absolutely off the wall and original you are in some way. Neptune at 29 degrees of Pisces is about surrendering to the now. Neptune is the focus on the present moment and accepting everything happening as it is instead of dwelling on worries. So how can you being your original self be at odds with surrendering to the now? It seems like those two things should be considered harmonious. But in the square format, those two themes feel more like an ongoing or a previous internal battle where you may have been suppressing something that you didn't think, you know, jived very well with the world as it stands. You suppressed something about yourself that you didn't feel able to express. And as a result, you haven't been able to show up completely 100% as yourself because something very conditioned or very conditioning about the external world made you think, because this is Mercury we're talking about, so it's thinking, the conditioning of the world made you think that you had to veil and hide some aspects of you in order to survive or to fit in or to succeed. So the square happening in the 29th degree, there's going to be a lot of these 29 degree aspects over the next month. Because Neptune is going to be hanging around that degree for a long time, so all other planets locking in with it, in their oppositions and in their squares, give this very final countdown kind of feel. So definitely get used to things feeling very conclusive and even very terminal and definitive as we move through the rest of this year and approach the early stage of 2025. And things really begin to set in finally in 2026. I will always look at the cycles that these transits are a part of as a bigger whole. So while you can connect with the general feels of the now, it does also help to understand what these sensations are all for the purpose of in the, you know, bigger perspective outlook of things to know what all of these individual sensations are leading up to. So the conclusiveness of this square will pair with one of a future moment that parallels this. And this is going to be discussed when it comes up in the future, but I do want to reference it now for that long range view I was talking about. Monday, June 17th of 2024, Mercury squares Neptune at 29 degrees. This is a penultimate push that you must listen to and take on board. And that is the message to honor your extremes, to honor that your views and your goals and your very being 
is different to everything else going on in the now. But then the future date, which is the closure point of this, the final moment of conclusion, it's January the 1st, 2026. And I do appreciate that that is a while in the future. But knowing the totality of this cycle can be helpful in surfing the waves along the way, so to speak. And so that final point, its message, is the keynote of empowerment with the experience being hermit mode. It seems by that point that isolation is going to be the safest, most pure experience. Sidestepping the requirements of the world that don't fit you by opting out of common social conventions, things that are considered cultural norms, but they're not going to be norms for you. Independence and hermit away from that stuff will be the survival way. As we approach the pivotal year of 2027, I will go on and on and on about 2027 until it is here. And I'm excited to do that episode too. I just have all these episodes to do and, you know, time is a real thing, but I'm working on it. I promise you. 2027 has been called the great mutation in the world of metaphysical evolution. The year of 2026 finishes with complete hermit behaviors. And this is the correct behavior. Independence is the lead. Because by 2027, you will only be able to rely on yourself. So I appreciate that all of that went on this very long term kind of ramble here. So condensing that sentiment to say that basically we are, this is, you are feeling everything heating up right now. And it's heating up for you to be more and more unique instead of trying to fit the mold of what you see around you. And Monday starts with this chance that you get to embrace your different and to choose more personally extreme things that fit you, which are decisions that future you in 2026 is going to be so very, very happy that you made in the now. In general, aside from realizing that you do better when you are authentically you more than, you know, conforming, there's some possible confusion where mistakes show up in numbers and wording at the start of the week how things are phrased, how things are received, problems in accounting and programming. There just may be some extra errors everywhere and other technical details are difficult to handle. The square also makes it hard to separate fact from fiction. So be careful of the information that you intake from Monday onwards and also be careful when your mind tells you that extreme ups and downs of life are not normal. That is not true. Music is comprised of a succession of crescendos and diminuendos, which is what makes certain songs so exciting and stimulating to experience. So this is a message to embrace your ups and downs, your crescendos and diminuendos, and enjoy the ride instead of muting your originality. All right, so Monday progresses, and after Mercury makes this last notable aspect point with its message of authenticity, it shifts into Cancer. And standard key things about Mercury in Cancer will be much more emotional communication, but not as emotional as you imagine. It can be a kind of openness to talk about feelings and how things are through a certain perspective. It's about being more open than you have been recently, but it doesn't mean sad or depressed or, you know, whining. It's just that there's an increased sensitivity to words and conversations or ideas. And the goal is for all of this to be focused more on a personal comfort, on safety development and nurturing. Mercury in Cancer gives you a little bit more access to intuitive thinking. You're more impacted by matters of the home and family, and this can bring back memories. So it is a period of heightened nostalgia, reminiscing more and valuing your own personal history. This is a great time to reflect on the past with the purpose of learning from it. So overall, Mercury in Cancer is an increase in sensitivity and this will be explored a little bit more in the exclusive episode all about the upcoming cancer energy with mercury and then also venus moving into the crabby symbol water sign now venus moving into cancer on the same day monday it gives rise to the energy of all things venus through a cancer zodiac lens so venus is money food and love it is also home in the form of the physical building that gives you protection cancer is a sign of the past memory. It's a sign of comfort, nurturing. Nurturing is actually a very popular word related to cancer. 
And so money, food, love, and the protection of your home might be things that you evaluate compared to your experiences of these matters in the past. And because Mercury is fresh into Cancer and Venus is fresh into Cancer, these naturally make a conjunction. The Mercury-Venus conjunction in Cancer is going to be explored in an independent episode. But for this very episode here, looking at the conjunction theme by degree, it's about the opportunity via an invitation of some sort to get one or all of these Venus things money, food, love, home, just the way you desire them to be. It's a tipping scale moment with the key theme of conditioned versus nature. And a lot of the conditioning that this is referring to is to do with how you've been taught to do things from family tradition or from elders or what have you. But the conjunction is really wanting you to reflect of your experiences over time and think about how you genuinely enjoy doing those things yourself outside of family conditioning. And I guess your genuineness is the nature part of this whole conditioned versus nature conundrum. If you're doing what just feels right and natural instead of doing things in a conditioned way with the expectations of a return, then you get this experience that is perfectly aligned It's the ultimate in existing in your own realm of power. And I hope that makes sense. That when you do what feels right and comes naturally, then everything just becomes pleasant and effortless. Moving on with the week, June the 20th, the sun in Gemini squares, Neptune in Pisces. This square happens in the exact same theme lineup as Mercury's Monday Neptune square. So that budding thought of needing to Stop being afraid of living your reality as unusual and non-conforming or off script as that may be. The sun in Gemini squares Neptune before the sun switches signs. So this is like a moment or a chance to really embody that sentiment of authenticity. Stepping into doing things different from what you think you should be doing always comes with the risk of feeling momentarily unsure or even lost about what's going on. You wonder how you're going to make something work if you do it differently to the way that everyone else apparently makes things work. And it's just this feeling of being a little bit unclear. Low energy is likely this week. So be prepared for that. Try not to numb yourself or use any kind of stimulants during this time. The tendency towards escapism and drugs and drink and coffee and other things that dull senses and stimulate the system these might all be heightened urges so resist that there's really nothing else to say other than resist those urges but the worst case scenario of the sun neptune square is an embarrassing moment or feeling ill feeling under the weather or even feeling unsure about what the heck life is even about you know it's that usual neptunian confusion And then the best case scenario is daydreaming your way into the start of cancer season and letting yourself be a little bit away with the fairies. And that's what they used to say back home in England when I was a kid. If you were off in your mind, if you were like daydreaming of all the wonderful fantasy things and all the potentials, you were said to be away with the fairies. So the sun into cancer, June 20th. I like this season because it's my birthday season. In between readings, I've been prepping my own solar return for the year ahead. So I've got this diary with all the dates of the next year to expect. And I absolutely love when the new birthday year switches over. I used to hate birthdays simply because they were made into kind of a negative thing in my family. But now I absolutely love and enjoy reading the new chapter of the year ahead. It's the story that your new birthday season tells. And I love tracking it as it develops. My last year's birthday chapter was full of health wobbles. And that was written in the chart for the year. And this year they lessen significantly. So yeah, I'm super excited for cancer season. I am here for it. There will be a separate episode on the sun in cancer. That's going to look at the whole rundown of cancer season for each sign. But for now, as we enter into this water sign, you can expect more water matters to show up. It's the summer solstice, so if you've got a pet, their coats are changing. If you have children, they're off school. Cancer season is just naturally a bit more homely, yet summertime is commonly 
more of this outwardly lived active time. It's really the best time to tend to anything to do with your home. So moving and relocating, rearranging, cleaning, fixing are all great activities. Just make sure you're subscribed for the exclusive bonus episode access because I will detail the date specifics of cancer season 2024 on a special upcoming show. So how the rest of the week looks. Mercury now in cancer. Sextile with Mars in Taurus is great for very pinpointed, mental, detail-oriented work. There is this sharp mental focus where you can suddenly create clarity out of chaos. Towards the end of the week, you may have more energy than the beginning of the week, unless you are Gemini. Gemini are probably going to suffer energetically for the next three weeks. But even then, a Gemini will still be capable of putting in the long hours and getting a lot done. But the overall theme for every sign is harmonious illusion and this idea of spontaneity mixed together with that. So it means keeping your eye on the prize and really getting lost in the dreamy idea of like what could happen positively. Yes, there's a potential of it to turn into a fear and worry, but the more you focus on a dreamy goal that you have, even if that seems wildly just like an illusion, it's the focus on dreamy goals that give you the strength and the courage to power through easily, regardless of the current situation. Towards the end of the week, it becomes more effort that is manageable without the pressure behind the effort. It's not the kind of anxiety driven process but more so that you enjoy the things and the activities that you need to do on the way to your main goal objective. And because of the pleasantness and the adaptability, you can spontaneously act on and take any opportunity that shows up to work in your favour. And the keyword opportunity is super important because that is the theme keyword of the Capricorn full moon, which is my absolute favourite thing this week. Every full moon signifies an ending and it depends on your sign where you see this ending show up, which is going to be detailed in each horoscope. But this is one of two Capricorn full moons this year. It's an unusual double full moon in the same sign consecutively. And these are really interesting because of the degrees they occur in. So there are 30 degrees in each sign. The signs start at zero degrees and end at 29 degrees. So if you include zero as a number all the way through to 29, that is 30 total increments from zero to 29. So this full moon is at the first degree and then next month's full moon is at 29 degrees. So this is like a bookend. It says to me that this situation that is ending under this double Capricorn full moon It's going to take around a month to really fully set in for start. It's not like an instant ending. It's not a very affirmative, clear ending to begin with. It's dragged out over the entire month. And this week's full moon suggests that the opportunity to close a chapter and start a fresh new experience of growth requires you to keep things going as they are even though you know that there is a permanent change coming in the not too distant future, even though you are aware that something big is coming to a close, it's coming to an end and you might want to start, you know, shifting things around now pertaining to that upcoming conclusion. It's about not pressing on with that transformation just yet, despite knowing that it's coming. You really kind of have to stay with things as they are for now until next month's Capricorn full moon in the 29th final degree, before you can share the details of the change, before you can action the permanent transformation in its entirety. So this full moon requires some self-control, some restraint from sharing your news or your developments with others. It's a necessary disengagement from anyone who pushes too much into your business. They want to know what's going on. Shut those doors for now. The time will come For you to drop your bombshell and to share your news and to, you know, conclude this ending. And it really doesn't matter when or how that moment is, when it arrives, how it comes. It's no one else's business. This new future is you 
carving it out. It's not for anyone else to impart their perspective on. It's your journey. Others are spectators and nothing more. The second full moon in July is the theme of enlightened self-interest. And I'm already way too overexcited to analyze that upcoming lunar experience, but not getting carried away with that now or wishing time away coming back to the full moon this week. This whole lunar closure chapter is about favorable actions taken in the present moment. It's about pacing yourself to put an end to something that has been holding you back since this time last year while overcoming a big hurdle that's probably been a low-key fear or worry this whole time. And I've included a link below to download a Full Moon workbook that offers the power of closure and ways to utilize this transformative pathway for your own maximum benefit. The new and Full Moon workbooks are just simply my offerings to help you align to the actuality of what's going on as per the degree of these lunar events. So you don't just blindly, you know, say or pass the chance to actively participate in generating the energetic outcomes of this moment. So for full lunar closure, click the Capricorn Full Moon book link below to really get deep into it. And as always, each horoscope is timestamped below for your convenience. This week for Aries, in line with being more authentic and, you know, there being a struggle there, this is about you exploring new skills or it's about you taking existing skills and applying them in a fresh new environment. They say that there's more than one way to shine a penny and this seems appropriate because it's kind of like now you are faced with the uncomfortable decision to try your talented hand at something new during which this entire time, the old comfortable settings of work and talent and skills will continue to invite you to stay where, you know, it feels like you're in that comfort zone. But comfort is an illusion because try to remember the last time you were comfortable for like an extended period of time. That's not life. That's at least not what life is about currently. Times of rest and relaxation and less energy exertion are all necessary but right now it's more about using your power to craft the next chapter rather than reserving your power so being authentic is remembering and coming to terms with a whole bunch of detours that during this time of your life where everything is anything but linear you don't need to explain yourself your experience, you're trying your hand at something new. You don't need to explain that to anybody else. There may be an invitation to connect with someone from childhood that comes up this week, someone from your hometown or some kind of other pleasant or maybe even romantic connection and conversation, maybe with someone from the past in another way. Give yourself the chance to really feel out a response. There may be a conditioned reaction that is instant this instant response that you kind of want to stick with, but you want to wait at least three to four days, maybe even until the end of the week, to wait for the truly innate, natural response to this information to rise in your body. So make no rushed decisions when it comes to someone extending some kind of olive branch or invitation to you. And just one other representation of this aspect could be you receiving information regarding your home that impacts your income or is impacted by your income. The second point of authenticity this week might be a check-in point of doing some investigating. Maybe you need to find out more about a situation before you make a choice to do with it. And while this seems to present as potential for gossip, I think it's more that you need to be cautious of the source and the origin of the information that you receive and believe. By all means, ask the questions you need answered in order for you to feel confident with the decision you're about to make, but also, Take what some people say with a pinch of salt. Before the week finishes with the Capricorn full moon, you might indulge some of your hard-earned money on a cool, necessary like gadget or an app or a techie type of purchase. Or maybe you make money that helps you feel secure in making what might be one of the biggest purchase decisions on your future yet. Because with the Capricorn full moon, This closes a chapter or a door in a work realm. 
this is the first step in winding down a work situation because there are two Capricorn full moons this year. So this is the start of a process of giving all of your effort and discipline towards making a new opportunity into a real workable thing and closing this other chapter professionally. And then July 21st might be the pivotal point in a very conservative transition or your final big exit from a work situation completely. And make sure to listen to the reading for your earth sign. It's the sign earth was in when you were born on it. It lets you know about the kind of more earthly material developments of the week. And your earth sign is Libra. And then there is the reading for your soul sign, which is the sign the sun was in three months before you were born. This is said to be when your soul path developed. This is going to let you know more about what's going on behind the scenes. And your soul sign is Capricorn. And the most event aligned reading you can listen to is going to be for your rising sign. It's known as the ascendant in astrology. And if you don't know what your ascendant is, use a calculator below to find out. This week for Taurus, in line with becoming more authentic, this requires some keen consideration to be given to your chosen profession and source of income. If there's been a long-term dream, it's now about how that is correct for you to explore and research and discover what you need to do to turn that dream into a reality. For some reason, you have put it off or it has just naturally come around that it's been put off. This is the message to no longer do what is needed just because, you know, you have to conform to these necessary requirements. It's no more about doing what you've always done because it's convenient. This is the time to sell a business, to apply to a job, to start studying to become an expert in a field. It's good for you to receive positive information back from a previous application maybe, or to revisit something that you were going for in the past but you want to bring that back into the now. And in pursuing what you really, really want to do, you might receive a desirable response or letter from that situation this week or shortly after. The week's main theme of authenticity is really kind of strung throughout the days and it seems like an actual development of authentic nature comes from, you know, a previous experience that you did once or twice and you want it to be a more regular thing or a previous application or pursuit into a more aligned profession. And the bonus is, in changing your professional life, this could be the last time you ever have to change anything to do with your work. Because making that transition from here on in, you will be able to stably climb one ladder of one profession and become increasingly experienced in one direction that feels right without needing to chop and change and jump around themes of work or you know types of industry ever again this is like your final form professionally and a big key in getting yourself where you want to be this week is gonna be sleep and I don't know if you've been off of sleep but there's a message here to get that fixed to set a good bedtime and to stick to it because good resting habits seem to be vital to this professional progress Especially because with the Capricorn full moon initiating an end, it does so in this two-step manner where the first Capricorn full moon this week is the opportunity to end the old life and embark on new horizons. You need to get good rest and sleep for that. Followed by the second Capricorn full moon next month, which closes the gap, the metaphorical space between what you've been existing in and what you really want for your future. And you start to more formally put effort into an active life of rebuilding your long term in a totally new way altogether, which may involve future exploration and a little bit of travel on the horizon. And if you want to get more from your reading, consider listening to the reading for your Earth sign. Your Earth sign is Scorpio. It's the sign Earth was in when you were born on it. And that horoscope will let you know more about the earthly material developments this week. And then there's a reading for your soul sign, which for you is Aquarius. And this is the sign the sun was in three months before you were born. This is said to be when your soul path is fully confirmed and developed, kind of before your arrival. And listening to that horoscope lets you know more about what's going on behind the scenes. And then for the most event aligned reading you can listen to, it's going to be for your rising sign, aka the ascendant in astrology. And if you don't know what your ascendant is, use the calculator below to find out.
This week for Gemini, the authenticity message is very personal because this is the last touch point of Mercury being in your sign. So this could be the bubbling up of feelings that you have in some way been held back, whether you feel like you've been held back by someone else or you've been held back by yourself. And you feel like now there's like a lot of ground to be recovered from all of that progression potential that you lost. And a lot of people are not going to understand this about you because you've either painted such a great picture in the recent past, you've put on a great face, a great front, that things were fine and that you had everything in check, or, you know, there are things that you just haven't opened up about that are very private matters to you that you're still mentally working through and others have zero idea about. The Mercury-Venus conjunction is about money. It's about whether you approach this topic of finances in a way that you've been told to do, which is the conditioned, or if you handle money in a way that's right for you, which is natural. So conditioned is just others saying that this is how money life should be done. And natural is just about being open to how that topic shows up naturally in your life. You might not get to pick and choose how finances operate in your experience because they show up how they show up. So try not to fight like the natural order of things. And if you have to keep a few secrets to avoid others' judgments, then fine. Keep yourself safe and do so. Before the sun in Gemini leaves your sign for this year, it's this final push to actively change your future plans somehow. It's enough, you know, earlier in the week to think about and to organize the things that you would like to do. But around the 20th of June, it turns into this moment to take action, to actually effectively behave in this active way towards living your most authentic life. It seems like the first important part is to start with a good budget system so that your resources and your needs don't trip you up or you don't get lost in the details of basic existence. Because when the full moon in Capricorn comes along with its two-step process, the first step being this week, it offers an opportunity to close a door on a situation that you are intermingled in with somebody else, where you're kind of pulling apart the pieces of what's theirs and what's yours to fully kind of separate belongings and feelings and sentiments. And it's really time to see an ending and a separation and an isolation as a bigger, grander scheme opportunity that becomes more clear at the second Capricorn full moon around the end of July. And to get more out of your horoscope reading, it's worth listening to the reading for your earth sign. So the earth sign is the sign earth was in when you were born on it and the sun was in Gemini. Your earth sign is Sagittarius and it lets you know more about the material earthly happenings going on in your week. And then there is a reading for your soul sign. The soul sign is just the sign the sun was in three months before you were born. It's said to be when your soul path developed. And listening to this is going to let you know more about what's going on behind the scenes. And your soul sign is Pisces. And the most event aligned reading that you can listen to is going to be for your rising sign, known as the ascendant in astrology. And if you don't know what the ascendant is, use the calculator below to find out. This week for Cancer, the idea of becoming more authentic is a little bit of a difficult one for you because this is about living your authenticity in secret, at least at the start of this week. Because other people's opinionated perspectives often capsize your entire experience. It's kind of like the weight of others' emotions regarding your process gets into your vessel and it sinks your emotion and your experience and your heart. And it's sad when you say that out loud. But making moves in silence and in private seems necessary. And the strength to keep on with your beneath the surface actions comes from getting enough sleep because it looks like sleep has gone off track this last week and it needs to be back to what suits you best. So go back to setting your best bedtime and your most efficient rising time and put yourself back on that cycle. 
the Mercury Venus conjunction in your sign is so so sweet it could be this little blessing that comes to you that brings some calmness that eases your mind it gives you peace of mind it might be very welcome if you've recently suffered some stress specifically stress to do with becoming independent and standing on your own two feet or stress related to efforts in a career the whole idea of conditioned versus nature here is down to your very every iota of being it's about doing life your natural way not the conditioned way it's about pursuing what feels natural in your everyday choices and not making selections of things to pursue based on what you think you should be doing thanks to societal pressures or worse, family pressure. This is a great time to plan or get ready to take a trip or a vacation that might be part of your unfolding life growth and development. It's the idea of the first point of stepping into your skin. And the last time this conjunction happened in Cancer was 2019. So if you have felt kind of trapped since then this could be the start of you breaking free the second hint at authentic living after the week starts out with you keeping your moves under wraps is about actioning something so while you have been planning things hopefully quietly now you're about to physically embark on one of those many new actions or activities that will set to progress your life forward and you may still not want to tell anyone this is the idea that your travels just suddenly pop up on your feed, if at all. Or maybe you pass an educational course that no one knew you were even taking. Or you start a study and still nobody knows about it. This could also be the beginning of abundance showing up that you should not wear on your sleeve. As in, yes, it's okay to treat yourself, but also don't be too flashy if that makes sense. Mercury in Cancer, Sextile Mars in Taurus is the arrival of a slow but sure turning point, bringing solutions to your professional life. Some effort you've been putting in starts to pay off in a very slow and steady wins the race kind of dynamic. You could see doors cracking open with opportunity for professional satisfaction peeking through. If there's something that needs to be done, you get it done. And then the Capricorn full moon in your opposite sign, it might be a deal or an agreement or a situation extended to you through someone else. It's an opportunity to close a chapter that another person is a pivotal part of making happen for you. No human is an island, as they say, so there is this really important point of understanding how others support and help you. Not trying to do and be everything yourself. And with this being two full Capricorn moons in a row, this is the opening opportunity this week that starts the process with someone else leading you to safety or to success in a way. And then July shuts a door for good as you tick and turn over into this new fresh experience of your life, which is a positive thing. Or just someone helps you shut something about your old experience out. And to really get more out of these horoscopes, it is worth combining the earth sign, the sun sign, the soul sign and the rising sign. So your earth sign is the sign opposite yours on the wheel. It's the sign Earth was in when you were born on it. For you, this is Capricorn, and it lets you know about the earthly developments this week. And then your soul sign is Aries. Listening to that will tell you more about what's going on behind the scenes. And the soul sign is just a sign the sun was in three months before you were born. It's said to be when your soul path is confirmed and developed. And the most event aligned reading you can listen to is going to be for your rising sign. And if you don't know what your rising sign is, use the calculator below to find out. This week for Leo, the challenge with becoming more authentic is to do with your personal kind of social environment. So you've been around a certain type of people or a certain group of people for a while, and it's now time to analyze if that social environment is suited to you anymore. This is the idea of selling up, settling up, packing up, leveling up and exiting a group in order to absorb yourself into a different class of company. People you've been connected with may not be the most truthful, aligned types. And now you're ready to be around those that you share more like-mindedness with. The Mercury-Venus conjunction with its theme of conditioned versus nature is the idea of a private agreement going on behind the scenes that's going to support you in your pursuit of true authentic living. So it's a secret deal, a money exchange, a sale, a purchase, a offer, or anything that brings value is likely going to be kept a secret until it no longer can be kept a secret. And it's also going to be the foundation of you making a huge life shift that's currently loading into your experience. And some of the context that you make now, some of the 
new contacts and friends and connections that you make now could help you in your next moves as your life switches lanes. The second point this week that revisits the authentic living motto is the idea of giving yourself a break. There is less energy at your disposal, especially if you try and push forward with things that are really not correct for you. And even so, if you are in alignment energy, energy could be still low somehow this week because it seems like the week forces a rest or a break onto you somehow, either energetically draining you or making you unwell or giving you a moment of confusion under which you just can't seem to make any solid decisions. So instead you kind of exist treading water. Your social surrounding is unstable. It's supposed to be. It's subject to rapid change. You can choose to find this stimulating and you can enjoy the ride, engaging with new ideas and new people positively. This will also give you a clear space as the weekend comes to express your opinions and beliefs with others in a healthy growth development kind of way. And the Capricorn full moon is an opportunity to shift your work life. It's a change of job, a change of scenery, a change of habits and a change of health all at once. This first full moon arrives as sparking off that opportunity. And then you seal the deal, so to speak, or you close that chapter fully, making the shift in its entirety in your work or your health or your daily schedule and habits, the way you live your life. This change is made in full by the end of July next month. And if you want to get more from your reading, consider listening to the reading for your Earth sign. It's the sign Earth was in when you were born on it. Listening to that is going to let you know more about kind of the earthly material developments this week. And your Earth sign is Aquarius. And then there is the reading for your soul sign. This is the sign the sun was in three months before you were born. It's said to be when your soul path developed. And listening to that is going to let you know more about what's going on behind the scenes. And your soul sign is Taurus. And then there is the reading for your rising sign, also known as the ascendant in astrology. And if you don't know what the ascendant is, use the calculator below to find out. This week for Virgo, the idea of becoming more authentic, of becoming more comfortable with your true authenticity is to do with your choice of company you keep. This is about schmoozing with really cool, important, authoritative people. It's people you aspire to be like or people you are inspired by. And then to get rid of any connections with people that seem full of illusion. This is kind of a tough one because there's a really caring, understanding, sensitive nature to you that attracts people who are a little bit damaged. And then what happens is that hurts you. You become collateral damage in someone else's fight with themselves. But you feel too guilty to leave them in the lurch. You don't want to hurt anyone. But the being authentic message is about punching upwards when it comes to your connection. Be around people smarter than you. It's that age old cliche of not being the smartest person in the room. Because you are always interested in growth and development, you need to be around people who lift you up. The Mercury-Venus conjunction is a blessing. It's to do with the idea of conditioning versus nature. It could be good news from a friend, or it's just hearing something lovely from a friend that you needed to hear. And it boosts your confidence and it lets you live more in your authenticity. Maybe some words of advice make sense to you and also give you a bit of courage to put yourself first more often. There may be a little bit of spending on expansion this week. So let's just call it investing, where you invest in yourself and your future maybe some travel or study or education. So enrolling in something is very valuable, as is paying off something that's been, you know, a debt that's been sitting on the back of your mind. The Capricorn full moon offers a point of closure. Step one, the full moon this week is an opportunity to have a little bit more fun. You've been putting in the work and you've been doing more responsible activity than relaxing activity. So now comes the first step towards a more enjoyable pace. And then the second full moon in the same sign next month at the end of July is the full point of closure where, you know, something like a broken heart or a lack of chance to let your hair down, you know, this rigid existence begins to soften and end, opening you up to a world of future potential love, which is likely to be with someone older than you. And also just some fun activities, hobbies and enjoyment that you truly deserve. And to get more from your reading consider listening to the reading for your earth sign. Your earth sign is Pisces and it's the sign earth was in when you were born on it. 
listening to that is going to let you know more about the earthly developments this week. And then there's a reading for your soul sign. The soul sign is simply the sign that the sun was in when your soul path was said to have developed three months before birth. Listening to that lets you know more about what's going on behind the scenes and your soul sign is Gemini. And to get the most event aligned reading for you, you'll want to listen to the reading for your rising sign. It's known as the ascendant in astrology and if you don't know what your ascendant is, use the calculator below to find out. This week for Libra, becoming more authentic seems to be about diving into the more mystical sides of your interests. Your mind area of the chart is ruled by Sagittarius, so you naturally have wisdom. But your true value and abundance is found more in unusual, mystical, spiritual, woo-woo, beneath the veil kind of things. So get deep into the real unusual parts of life. Explore the mystical and the weirder interests that you have. On the logical side of things, if there is something serious and legal going on, some kind of agreement, it may be under a cloud of confusion, just because things are really up in the air, up in the clouds. Mercury in Cancer conjunct Venus in Cancer and its theme of conditioned versus natural is to do with cleansing yourself of people telling you what to do in order to achieve this or that. Negotiations in a work realm or negotiations about what the future is going to look like, shouldn't even really be negotiations at all. It's your life, your choice. And the beauty is to live life your way. You choose your profession. You experiment. You choose what you want to do, what you want to explore. And you should make this choice without the pressure or influence of someone else's opinion. The second authenticity check-in point this week with the Sun in Gemini, Square Neptune in Pisces suggests that you find more purpose through connecting with or collaborating somehow. It's like combining your experience and your life with others, which can be anything from marrying the person who loves you in all of your weird and wonderful ways or collaborating with a partner in something that you both stand out in, that you both agree with in this kind of unique off-the-wall perspective. It's really through this kind of involvement with groups that you thrive, but anything bigger than a like-minded group, so I'm talking into the realms of a crowd, then you'll start to feel drained and uncertain. So it's to, you know, count your closest friends and companions on one hand. Legal matters could come to a successful conclusion by the end of the week, and all kinds of relationships become more active, more full of life, with just a few practical matters to deal with. The Capricorn full moon is the first step in a two-step experience. It's an opportunity to change and completely end a situation to do with home and family. The full completion of this change shows up by July 20th, but this week it hints at the first motion to start this shift, where you realise or you are shown that something in your home life or family life situation must come to a healthy end, and it's time to move on or close a matter for good in the name of securing yourself for the future. And to get more from your reading, consider listening to the reading for your earth sign, which is Aries. Listening to this is going to tell you more about the earthly developments this week. And then there is the reading for your soul sign. So the soul sign is the sign the sun was in three months before you were born, which is said to be when your soul path developed. And your soul sign is Cancer. And then there is the most event aligned reading you can listen to. It's going to be for your rising sign, aka the ascendant in astrology. And if you don't know what your ascendant is, use the calculator below to find out. This week for Scorpio, the idea of becoming more authentic, it shows up twice this week. It starts with a true inner understanding of where you maybe need to be a little bit less indulgent in recreational things. Off the cuff, this is about less fancy dinners, less nightcaps, less of the really let your hair down types of behaviours. And it's not about being, you know, boring. It's not thinking that without those things, life is boring. But instead filling that time with hobbies, it's like cultivating talents and skills and indulging in hobbies is much more favorable than social recreational time this week. So skip brunch and cultivate a talent. The highlight of Mercury Venus conjunction, the theme of conditioned versus natural, is about the next step you're planning to take. Are you on a path or a journey of your own making? Or has someone else somehow influenced what you think you should be aiming towards as a goal? Check in with your own incentives and motivations and make sure that they're yours. And consider if there is a relationship that is more influential than it kind of 
lets you be autonomous. This week's second point of becoming more authentic is that once you pull back and you do your own thing, back into that cultivation of hobbies and skills theme, someone might try and pull you off that wagon again. Others don't seem to like when a Scorpio is solo successful. I don't know why that is. Sometimes others are intimidated by a Scorpio who is successful on their own. And so they like to try and slow down your pace and pull your focus away from your targets. Maybe it's because it makes them feel better about their own lack of focus. But that's a challenge to watch for this week. People trying to tempt you to take a break. This is not the week to take a break. Your creativity and imagination are high. You can create a lot of positive stuff based on this and you shouldn't neglect those faculties. This week is really a time for getting work done and solving problems and brainstorming things that you know are going to be fun to work on and still bring you abundant results. It really is best to go it alone and you will probably feel like being alone. The Capricorn full moon is about an opportunity to sign on the dotted line. This might be to do with ending a problem or a situation. And if not, it's just some general contractual stuff, paperwork matters that show up this week that require your signature. And this is a two-step process because the first opportunity to sign and end a situation shows up in the next seven days. And then the conclusion is here in full around the 20th to the 21st of July next month. But knowing that the process is starting now is good enough for you to feel and trust the end of something coming in fast. And if you want to get more from your reading, consider listening to the reading for your earth sign. This lets you know more about what's going on in the earthly developments. It's the sign earth was in when you were born on it. And for you, this is Taurus. And then there is the reading for your soul sign, which is said to be the sign the sun was in three months before you were born. That's when your soul path developed. And your soul sign is Leo. Listening to that lets you know what's going on behind the scenes. And the most event aligned reading you can listen to is going to be for your rising sign. This is known as the ascendant in astrology. And if you don't know what your rising sign is, use the calculator below to find out. This week for Sagittarius, the message in becoming more authentic shows up through your very, very close relationships. And the challenge is, are you trying to keep peace that shouldn't be kept? You know how sometimes things need to fall. They need to burn down to show the truth of the crap that sits within. This means that false pleasantries and appeasing situations, which is really just ignoring the truth of something, are not helpful. And these false pleasantries are maybe at home or with family. And as a naturally growing divide gets bigger, like it's supposed to, don't try and save the situation. Let it crumble. This is especially important because it may be that something or someone else somewhere in the family realm has and will continue to hamper your authenticity throughout life if you keep those family ties intact. The conditioned versus natural theme might even connect with this idea. So Mercury and Venus conjuncting cancer is all about the home life situation. So an end to a home or family matter, an end that is coming quickly, might be on your mind. This could signify anything from the desire to change where you live or some other impending loss or shift in the family world that's likely to arrive later this year. And I guess the question is, are you handling the inevitable family changes naturally? Or is previous conditioning coming in, making these upcoming changes difficult because you are just going back to things as if nothing ever happened? On the positive side, this is a time of working out details in a contract. An agreement can be worked out in your favour this week if you commit to handling paperwork, legal, or other relevant matters with a tactical approach. The second point of authenticity showing up is to do with travel. There is something necessary about a trip or some travel that you may be taking or planning on taking. Any trips taken now could really create a cloud of confusion about what to do. So when in doubt, lean on someone or ask someone you trust implicitly to work through these mental details of the situation with you. Don't try to figure it all out in your head alone. It becomes easier to make compromises that end up working out in your best interest this week when there is this balance of give and take. Things just seem to go much more smoothly only when it's with someone you trust. The Capricorn full moon is a final moment of change in money matters for you and it starts this week and it comes to a full conclusion around July 20th. It could be anything from ending financial struggle to ending a source of income and needing to find a new one that suits you better. But rest assured, your financials are going through the full moon kind of conclusion this week and lasting for a full month. So yeah, be cautious with spending, but also surrender to the idea that the next phase is going to be much better than the one you are leaving. 
And to get more from your weekly reading, consider listening to the reading for your earth sign. Your earth sign is Gemini. It's the sign earth was in when you were born on it. And listening to that tells you more about what's going on in the earthly developments for you this week. And then there is the reading for your soul sign. Your soul sign is Virgo. It's the sign the sun was in three months before you were born. It's said to be when your soul path developed. And listening to that tells you more about what's going on behind the scenes. And then there is the reading for your rising sign, also known as the ascendant in astrology. And if you don't know what your ascendant is, use the calculator below to find out. This week for Capricorn, your working life gets hit hard by all of these squares. It's either that things are not going how you know they should be going, and that's uncomfortable. You know, part of this authenticity push is that you have ideas and answers and protocols and formats that are totally beneficial, but they are not necessarily things that you are able to lead with right now. And if it's not that things are all falling off balance in work, it could be that they're falling off balance in health matters. The theme of conditioned versus natural, thanks to the Venus-Mercury conjunction in your seventh house, also brings relationships into the mix, both personal and contractual. So you seem to be getting changes and challenges occurring from every single angle right now, 360 degrees of impact from the outside inwards for your Capricorn self to deal with. And the conditioning energy might be about not being able to speak up somehow. And that is anything from there being a situation you are literally not allowed to talk about. Or it could be a situation where you don't know how to say what you need to say. Using writing to get words out onto paper could be helpful. And then ordering and organizing those words from there could assist you in getting your necessary message and words across. With all the important stuff that feels very impending and intense, it really is best to procrastinate. This is actually a time that it is correct for you to procrastinate and put things off and take some time off handling all the looming situations if you can just until next week. Financial matters are showing up too. It really is a 360 degree pelting for you, Capricorn, where things and institutes and situations that were set up to help you or be a functional part of your efficiency are now not so helpful. It's difficult to depend on any external financial support or otherwise which makes this a week of decision making. Like there seems to be a lot of decisions that you need to make. Decisions before actions. And because of that, you might feel restless. If so, try getting outside to clear your mind. There's personal decisions and home decisions and professional decisions all to be made, and they shouldn't be made lightly. So if you are feeling restless, try not to make decisions under that kind of energy. There is a lot to do, a lot to get done. Your schedule is likely quite busy and active, but this seems to suggest that things go smoothly in the end. So maybe that insight can allow you to stress just a little bit less. Because the Capricorn full moon, it's in your sign. And it is a double Capricorn full moon sequence this year. Full moons are always a natural ending. And in your sign, that means, yes, there is a natural ending coming within your whole life experience. And an ending that comes now is an opportunity in disguise. Even if it doesn't feel that way, it is. And by July 20th to 21st, the more conservative conclusion of all of this becomes clear and worries melt away even if just a little. And to get more from your reading, consider listening to the reading for your earth sign. It's the sign earth was in when you were born on it. It lets you know more about the kind of physical earthly developments happening for you this week. And your earth sign is cancer. And then there is the soul sign. So the soul sign is the sign that the sun was in three months before you were born. It's said to be the time frame of which your soul path developed. Your soul sign is Libra and listening to that lets you know more about what's going on behind the scenes. And then there's the reading for your rising sign. It's going to be the most event aligned reading for you to listen to. It's also known as the ascendant in astrology. But if you don't know what your ascendant is, use the calculator below to find out. This week for Aquarius, the idea of becoming more authentic is so relevant for your sign in general. Thank you to the Pluto ingress into your sign. Although there might be a point where you kind of settle back into old habits from this week onwards. So this is getting sidetracked by things and people and events and situations that are comfortable. It just, it's not so great because your whole next decade is about complete and utter shifts of life. So look around you. See if you're settling back into a comfort zone of what is familiar. If you are, you can enjoy it but understand that it is going to change. Part of you becoming more authentic is to leave behind the things that are too comfortable and too basic because you've got a lot bigger things to transform and shift into and through. So the struggle opening the week 
might be that a little bit of complacency prevents your authenticity. There could be some good news that comes from a family realm, maybe news about a new family member arriving or good news for someone that you're related to. There could also be some news that comes to you regarding your job and it impacts your finances somehow. There could also be some romantic developments that show up in or through your work if it's not finance related. And if you are already in a relationship, there could be a little bit of distance between you and a partner. It's like all signs on the wheel are going through a little bit of an uncomfortable growth spurt right now. So live and let live. Give space for everyone to just be themselves and go through what they're going through. That seems important. It might be one of those times where you do more of your fair share than somebody else or somebody else does more of their fair share than you do. And try not to get upset or moan about it. It just is what it is. It's like a duo game of volleyball or tennis when you play in teams. You don't control the ball every time it's hit over your side. You trust that your partner's got, you know, the front of the court covered while you hold the back or vice versa. And you each take turns in carrying the load sometimes. It's natural. This is not about falling into conditioned roles that he or she or they must do this or that because hierarchy says so. The weekend comes and things feel a little bit lighter. Investments and negotiations go well if there are any. There's less agitation and trouble. There's more effective action. But just be careful while in traffic because some glitches or problems with a vehicle could be a thing. The Capricorn full moon might be the chance to put an end to a bad habit. And it could be a long drawn out process as long as maybe a month. And the first opening to handle something face on this week with the full closure ahead being reached around July 20th is to do with maybe a detox or a decompression or just to tighten up your behaviours. And if you don't do so willingly, a situation could arise to force you to do so. And to get more from your reading, consider listening to the reading for your earth sign. It's the sign earth was in when you were born on it. Let you know more about the earthly happenings this week. Your earth sign is Leo. And then there's the reading for your soul sign. It's the sign the sun was in three months before you were born. It's said to be when your soul path developed. And listening to that tells you more about what's going on behind the scenes. And your soul sign is Scorpio. And the most event aligned reading that you can listen to is going to be for your rising sign. Also known as the ascendant in astrology. And if you don't know what your rising sign is, use the calculator below to find out. This week for Pisces, the authenticity struggle is at home. Something you want to say but you can't say, or maybe something someone else says and it affects you. Something that everyone is ignoring and not talking about when they should be. This is a very personally impacting experience, and the confusing one too. There are no right words, but there's also no wrong words as long as you're speaking the truth. But for now, you might just find it easier to be quiet and to say nothing and to watch a situation unfold before you decide how to respond. In doing so, make sure you don't go kind of ham into, you know, recreational escapist behaviours while you wait. You may have these instinctively conditioned responses to discomfort. Like treading on eggshells might cause this rise up of a habitual response where you numb yourself or you try to escape or ignore a situation instead of feeding it out. And this is just because the idea of the uncertainty feels way too overwhelming. Try and find natural ways of healing and handling the stress this week where possible. Make time for peaceful rest and just moments spent alone so you can decompress. There could be a looming health matter as well. Whether it's coming about because of the stress of matters in your personal life or because of other people's behaviours that contribute to and culminate in this wealth wobble that you have, a moment of feeling unwell or being unwell, might impact your ability to work. And this leads to you thinking more about your finances, which I get, especially as Neptune is fixing to leave your sign next year. And when it does, it moves into your second house, which in its best expression could be having the income of your dreams. But in its worst expression, it could be absolute confusion about finances and money and all things resource-based. In fact, the upcoming meat catastrophe that I continue to predict on this show with Neptune moving into Aries, might impact you as a Pisces more than any other sign. And this is because the second house is to do with food. And Neptune going into Aries is going to be your solar second house. So you more than any other sign need to eat as clean as possible for your wellness. The Capricorn full moon closes a chapter with either a friend or a group that you are or were part of. 
this is a one month long process as you leave an organization or you experience the natural ending of a connection. And this is really just an opportunity to move on to bigger and better things once the transition is complete by the end of July next month. And if you want to get more from your reading, consider listening to the reading for your Earth sign. It's the sign Earth was in when you were born on it. And it lets you know more about the kind of earthly developments of the week. Your Earth sign is Virgo. And then there is the reading for the soul sign. It's the sign the sun was in three months before you were born. It's said to be when your soul path developed. And listening to that lets you know more about what's going on behind the scenes. Your soul sign is Sagittarius. And the most event aligned reading you can listen to is going to be for your rising sign, aka the ascendant in astrology. And if you don't know what your ascendant is, use the calculator below to find out. Okay, so that's it for this very long, deep, shifting episode. Stay tuned for the exclusives coming up this week, sharing specifics for each sign and what to expect. Until then, bye!